Okay, welcome everyone. Hello, Women Rock Switzerland. I'm Michelle Giuliano. I'm one of the co-founders of the group together with Denise Nickerson. We benevolently run Women Rock Switzerland. Now more than 12,000 of you are able to connect and unite and join forces and team and partner for women's economic empowerment and for the end of isolation for women. I am so delighted to be here with Shivani Himalaya. She is one of the authors in our Inspired Journeys collaborative book project. She is one of 31 authors in total who have contributed their stories so that Women Rock Switzerland also has a production um, so that we can share these stories and spread them around the world. Shivani is Swiss. She has uh, graduated from the University of Geneva and she is um, a master, a master teacher and a master Shiva guru. She is followed and following some of the masters of all time. She is extremely well read in uh, historic and spiritual teachings and she's just a fabulous person. And, uh, and her story chronicles, and I'm gonna ask her, but her story chronicles her journey uh, between the Himalaya and uh, the Swiss mountains, specifically the Matterhorn and, uh, and her pathway back to herself through real masters and real gurus who always return us to ourselves and I have, been so honored to be part of the editing team with Esther Berkey of Swiss Made Story um, and Denise Nickerson. We really wanted a story like this, a story um, to sort of round out how it is women in particular are taking our lives really seriously, but also beyond our emotional and, and, and physical and psycho-spiritual level, we're connecting to deeper forces, other forces, and, and as seekers and curious beings, um, it is really a pleasure to bring you Shivani. Um, and and her voice and and her personal story and her journey story, so that her teachings and her experiences can also spread around the world. So Shivani, welcome. Thank you very much, Michelle. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, the pleasure is ours. The pleasure is ours. So there are words that are mentioned throughout your book that are not commonly known, and and you talk about the five elements, and you talk about. Um, mental conditionings and the trappings of these mental conditionings and the freedom and total liberation uh, that one can experience through yoga, through breathwork, through meditations. And, uh, and you've really studied with some of the masters of the world. You mentioned in your story, you've traveled to 20 countries on your own and independently. You speak seven languages and perhaps other languages as well that, uh, that you've gleaned even since the writing of the book. And so would you mind telling us a little bit about your story? Definitely, yes. So these words, they come from Sanskrit, um, which is a very ancient language, uh, which I could learn in uh, India and in Himalaya, uh, where I came after searching uh, for the truth, for the wisdom since childhood. And I had the opportunity to travel to so many different countries and, and learn also from Western healers, teachers, and also Eastern uh, philosophies and uh, spirituality. For me, what was always important is the experience itself. Like I had many, read many books about the Himalayan yogis and masters, and I actually wanted to experience that, what they described, and not as an intellectual knowledge, but as a true and actual experience. So in Switzerland, when I went to the Swiss Alps, I could feel this connection with the Himalayas from the Swiss Alps and I felt a calling to go actually to India and uh, I did so, I went to India and first I was totally disillusioned because I came to like these big ashrams and um, the teaching was very man oriented in the sense that many techniques they were they were really um, designed for men and also in these traditions like in some ashrams they also told me I could not stay there because I was a woman so I went back on the next day and asked again because I felt uh, I, I came for that from Switzerland all the way so I, I want to learn I, I want to, to meditate and uh, to expand my energy, my consciousness. And um, I really reached a point where I felt totally disheartened and also demotivated on the energy level, financially, emotionally. And uh, I felt totally lost. And in that moment, I called the divine. Like I really, I prayed from my heart directly and I asked for help. And I saw this vision, which announced that I would 
reach to the master within three months. And it was so weird, it was so clear. So I felt like this is going to happen. And it did happen. So exactly after three months, I was guided to uh, Babanath, which is a very beautiful ancient temple on the hill. And there, uh, Inaga Baba, a yogi from Himalaya, he sent me to Shiva Guruji, who is an enlightened master from Himalaya. And the moment he said the name, I just felt the vibration. And yes, that's it. That, that's the master I was looking for, like a life master living, not something from the books or not hearsay, really a living master. And that was a crucial turning point for me. And Shiva Guruji, what was very surprising to me, he was like missioned to make women masters. That was very exceptional because all the other traditions which I encountered before, they had like this lineage of men and everything was like designed for men. And Shiva Guruji was given the mission to empower women and make women master and not like following instructions of a guru or of a teacher, but really to get your power back as a woman. And because women have very strong energy, like women are the only one who can give birth to a child, like to a life creation. And this, and women have like a unique power and energy. So that really clicked with me. And with the training with Shiva Guruji, and from there also these Sanskrit words come in, in the book, uh, it was really enlightening. It was really a um, very awakening experience. And I've learned from Shiva Guruji Shakti Yoga, which is like Shakti is the energy, it's like the Kundalini energy in, in other languages. It's like this feminine energy, this awakening energy, which is part of Shiva Dehan Yoga. And Shiva is the nature and what you have mentioned, the five elements. So the five elements of the existence, it's in our hands, like all the elements which are in the nature are also within us. And because of that, with the breath, with the different positions of the hands, we can realign with ourselves and we can really unlock the power within ourselves and awaken this Shakti energy. And this is truly what I could experience. That's why also I was very inspired to write about it and to share it and also started teaching it. Well, you tell it very well. This is a beautiful synopsis and congratulations on your story chapter. And for we're just so delighted that you're in the book um, along, with, uh, along with other powerful women who've also traveled the globe. Um, and so we all have our ways. Uh, one of the things that I thought was um, just a little snippet from your story, there's several that I may pull out if it, if it comes to it. But, you know, so often we can get place oriented. We can have magical moments in a particular place or in a particular time or with a particular construct of things. And you mentioned in your story uh, that Shiva was everywhere. And I wonder if that was like a mind blowing moment for you where you were like, oh, Shiva is this and it's everywhere. It's here in the Himalaya, but it's also at home. It's also, and right now you said you're at the Matterhorn, in fact, right now. So this concept of Shiva, Shiva being everywhere, does this, does this matter? Does this, when you've, you've coached more than 3000 women or led uh, through your trainings and programs, uh, does this impact people? Do they realize, oh, I can have Shiva right here where I am right now in my everyday Absolutely, yeah. It's um, at Mount Matterhorn. So I'm showing the picture. I can see it in front of me. <laughs> so it's really it's a magical mountain. It's like a Swiss Himalaya, and it's here where I got this experience. And it's really about realizing that we are one. Like we are one with everything. We are not separate from others. We are not separate uh, from uh, nature. Everything is like in this oneness. And I would really love to chant a mantra which exactly has this message. Go for it. Oh. <laughs> Purnasya punamadai punameva vashishyate Om Shanti 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 
Om, it means the omnipresent magic. It's like the vibration, it's the sound of a region. And Purnam Madha Purnamidam, it means everything is whole and complete. We all women, we are already whole and complete. We just have to realize it on the consciousness level and regain, like, retake the power. Beautiful and beautifully performed. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you very much. Um, so with that, I think it leads really well into a question I've been asking some of the other women, because in a group of this size and in our community, where at least to our count, we've counted more than 85 nationalities present, I think it's an important question, but how do you identify culturally? Absolutely, yes. So for me, I was born and grown up in Switzerland, and I do have learned a lot from the Western and also Eastern cultures. And especially like these mantras um, and uh, also the meditations, it's like it's part of the Himalayan culture and uh, especially these techniques are for women. So this is something which I really made my own in the sense it's, it's so totally synergizing with me and um, I can identify it because I have experienced it totally and truly. And I also observed that the more and more I am on this path of you know, reconnecting with the source, knowing who I am. You know, and I don't like think of past references or or like what I have learned as a child or what other people do. Uh, I have like my own way. I'm living in my authenticity. And in that also, I'm very happy. I'm like blooming and I feel energized. And that's for me like a hard culture. It's like really very, very important. So I'm always interested by that in terms of the, you know, because the language can be a limiting factor, even when you speak seven languages, it can be a limiting mm -hmm. factor, right? This idea of coming back to yourself, um, one can also postulate we never really lose ourselves, right? Coming back to source, does source ever really leave? These are, you know, just not necessarily questions you need to answer. You mentioned in your story a very practical, very tangible thing, right? That you had played the violin in your, in church as a child. Uh, Absolutely. Your mother, your mother took you to church. Then there was a, you don't talk about it per se, but I perceive that there was a break in, in your relationship with the violin or with this aspect of music because you talk about coming back to the violin and, uh, and, and playing the violin again in your story. And so I wonder about this, you know, this coming back, this circularity of coming back to self or coming back to source or coming back to music. It's not a question on my yes. list, but, <laughs> but do you have a thought about this or a reflection? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I did think about it. And it's true that for a moment, like when I left to India, I, I felt I have to leave everything behind, like everything which related to the past, everything uh, which um, also I used to do in the past. I felt I, I, total, I totally need to to start new, to start fresh and go to India. So I have done that. And um, when I came to Shiva Guruji, what was mesmerizing is that he saw that I used to play the violin as a child in the church. And I didn't even remember that. I didn't even think about that. So he expanded my perspective and made me understand that like it is beautiful what I have learned as a child and also this experience in the church, even though I did not agree on what the priest was preaching word by word. And I did not agree with many things in the church, which was also very male dominant. So that was a turning point also because I experienced sort of a rebirth and also could embrace the beautiful things from the past, like understand that not everything is to be labeled or not everything is uh, black or white. And I did not have to, um, you know, sit on the chair of the church and, and, uh, and say, this is good, this is bad. So really see the beauty in all, see the beauty uh, in, um, in the church also, and in that violin music play. And I restarted playing the violin. And she, she one day came uh, during the training when I was uh, in India and in Himalaya, he gave me a violin and he asked me to play it. <laughs> so that for me, it, it was it was such a beautiful experience because I, I really, I, for the first time, I just, I played from the heart and I, I it was like a meditation, it was like a prayer and, um, I was totally flowering with um, 
with the music and uh, with these uh, Shivalyan Yoga meditations, it's brought back to music in my life also. And um, something very inspiring, she would taught me, is like the soul is a dancer. Like when you are totally in the flow, then you feel that your soul is dancing, like happiness is like innate. So when we are playing the music or when I play the violin or go into meditation or I'm in the nature, I meditate with the sky and like totally in the synergy, then it's like this feeling of the soul is a dancer and, and um, turning, whirling with the hands in the sky and, and just experiencing this um, connection with all. It's so beautiful. Um, so this acceptance and this peace, and you talked about sort of coming home in the Himalaya and coming home to the Matterhorn. Mm -hmm. um, but you also talk about it as though you'd never really wandered in the mountains before. And so I'm wondering about this parallel between the mountains as home. Um, were you were you allowed to wander off? And do you still wander off in order to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, coming home for me, it was like an experience really on the soul level, like very deeply, like reaching this this point of stillness within. And before, like I used to travel a lot, like especially after university, I, I went here and there and I was thinking, what is the next place? What is the next destination? And in that way, I really came home and, and I felt like centered within myself. This is like, feeling home in that sense and regarding the mountains so I did uh, go to mountains with my parents and grandparents as a child in Switzerland um, um, but really this true experience the connection came later like when I went to Himalayas and when I was in Rishikesh I had very beautiful meditation experience like standing at the Ganges and I closed the eyes, it was like the early, early morning, and I saw Mount Matterhorn before me. Like, I was very surprised because uh, I felt, okay, I have left Switzerland, I'm now in India, I will stay here, I will go to a mountain cave and meditate. <laughs> and then I saw Mount Matterhorn, and um, I told Shiva Guruji about the vision, and, and he smiled, he said, yeah, it's it's like you you will go back to Matterhorn. And uh, he also told me that, like, Matterhorn, it's the same energy as Himalaya. I just, I was not aware of it before because even living in Switzerland, it's like, it's, um, yeah, it's not necessarily the first place you would go um, uh, yeah, for resourcing, for reconnection. So it, it was really um, a realization I had when I was in India. Well, so similarly, I mean, it's not the easiest destination to get to, right? I mean, to go, to the Matterhorn, you, first of all, you get cheated. You you think you're seeing the little Matterhorn <laughs> and you think that's it as you drive and then you take your train and then you walk a long way. And of course there it is through the village on the other side and then you can do whatever you wanna do in the nature. Um, so it's a, it's a journey to get to the Matterhorn as well. It's interesting that you chose of all the peaks that your consciousness chose this peak. Um, it's also funny, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, uh, you know, John Kabat-Zinn because you know, he, he sort of postulates you know, wherever you go, there you are, you know, so there's also, it's, it is interesting to stand at the Ganges River and to see the Matterhorn uh, and, to, and, to, and to find home within yourself. So I want to ask a very practical question um, because, of course, Denise and me and Esther, we want women to write. We want, we want women to share their stories. Um, we want more content of, of these incredible journeys ordinary, extraordinary, however we judge these people, um, we think that these are really inspired journey stories. I'm wondering what what have you gotten um, by writing this story at this time and place? What uh, what What is the one thing um, that, I don't know if there's one thing or many things, but what has it given you to write and to put it in paper and to get published or to be part of this team or, or to do it at this time in your life? Definitely. I, I'm very grateful for it. It's like, you know, there are so many things I have learned, so many experiences. So when you have like this opportunity, you know, you have to really bring it to the point and, you know, focus like on the key moments in your life. And it's like, as you're writing, you know, it's a reflection which is happening. You re-experience, uh, you relive the moments and uh, 
it's very exciting and inspiring also. I really enjoyed it and I love it to be, you know, a co-creation project for of women. It's like, it's really beautiful. I'm very happy to be part of it. <laughs> great. That's great. Um, and right now, is there something that you're feeling particularly grateful for? I mean, I'm guessing that you're a gratitude master, um, but is there something in your life that is, uh, if you were tapping into gratitude right now, how's that feeling for you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm very grateful for being able now to step out and share more with women with uh, Shakti. This is going to be a new initiative uh, which uh, I'm launching. It's inspired, of course, by what I've learned from Master Shiwurchi, but it's also really an initiative by women for women, like with the vision to bring together women, to support each other, to empower each other, to share the knowledge with each other. So uh, this is something like, um, you know, going higher, women have to become leaders and go on the top in like, in professional spheres, in all the dimensions. And this is something which I very, very strongly feel like women have to get at least 50% of the decision-making positions. Like there has to be a huge change happening in the world and also in Switzerland. Like women really have to get into power to make a difference for humanity. Beautiful. Beautiful. We have a coaching question because our business, of course, Soul Consulting and Communications is a is a is a coaching and communication strategy company. And so we like to ask all of you arrived women who have who've taken part in this in this project. But when you're feeling blocked, when you're feeling stymied, when you're stuck, how do you turn things around for yourself? What is your what is your go to strategy when you're feeling that alone or isolation or that or that stuckness? How do you get unstuck? <laughs> yeah, so this is like the feeling I, I have previously described uh, when I went to India, when everything started at that time, I really felt very blocked and stuck. And um, I've learned these very specific energy meditations of uh, Shiva Dhyan Yoga and Shakti Yoga, and they truly awaken the energy and practicing it. You know, it's like it increases the energy every day and also loving meditations like there are love meditations you know very very you love very loud and uh, you you really um you release all the tensions and going out going to the sky that's very important it's the first thing like um the himalayan masters also learn is sky meditations you know really to open the heart open the arms to look into the sky with open eyes and to see the infinity of the sky because when you see the vastness before you you remember actually this infinity it's in you you have infinite possibilities within you and then you really you can expand you don't uh, you don't get uh, stuck with the own emotion or thoughts you can totally open up and expand with the energy so that's uh, very very powerful i love that you brought that up because uh, i mean all the historical teachings and spiritual teachings do talk about mountains and summiting, not only for the metaphor of the effort or the enduring, but also to be closer to God. And the fact that you just tied it in, that there's this vastness and this expansiveness, and that in fact, the vastness and expansiveness is within us. Uh, that's very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Thank you for that. So what's next for you and what are you working on now? Yes, so it's all about women empowering women and Shakti. So awaken this Shakti energy and bring women together to really to make a difference together for the world and to empower each other, um, to bring women as a leaders, as a masters to the top. That's uh, something I'm working on now. And um it's uh, it's really about upliftment on many levels, like on energy level, but also being able to implement it in the professional world and to be financially strong, to be financially independent. And uh, for that also, I I do coachings with women and um, uh, together with Shiwoji, we have also planned Mahalakshmi workshops, like really to awaken the energy of the goddess in you, like to feel this energy, Mahalakshmi. It is a goddess of wealth and wisdom. And it's like a potential we all have, all women have within themselves. And it's important to awaken it 
and to live it, to experience it. And you mentioned that you have, in our pre-call anyway, you mentioned that you have three events coming up. Do you want to share about exactly, those? Exactly, yeah. So on the on 3rd of June, a Mahalakshmi workshop um, in uh, near Zurich, uh, in the German-speaking part of Switzerland, um, and also a um, leadership course uh, for women. That's, that's going to be an online course um, uh, held on Sundays. Um, and also a um, Mahalakshmi workshop in Oran, which is near Lausanne, in the French-speaking part of Switzerland. And uh, there are going to be more online courses also, like a sort of um, trainings, but also, you know, where you have group exercises, where you work on the leadership skills holistically. Like, of course, there is a spiritual dimension, but then there's also a practical dimension, like how to implement it, how to transform the areas in your life which you want to see different and how to step in into your power. It's all about, you know, appreciation of yourself, of your own qualities and understanding, you know, who you are, getting the freedom, like freedom to be who you are, like not living in the fears, not living, you know, in in sense of um, dependency of others, like really stepping into your power and and feeling the freedom, like the freedom on the consciousness level, on emotional level, and also on mental level, and really truly being independent. Beautiful. And I'm assuming on your website, which I'm going to ask you to name and spell for everybody, but yes, on your on your definitely. website, we can, we can find these events and we can find also perhaps some testimonials and some experience stories. Definitely. So the, the website, it's shivakuruchishivani.org and uh, YouTube channel Shivani Himalaya and also Shiva Guruchi, the both we share um, wisdom we share meditations we share about universal laws uh, for example about consciousness and uh, on facebook as well um, and we have uh, whatsapp groups so if you would like to connect on whatsapp also very happy to do that um, beautiful so that's at www.shivagurujishi vani.org. So that's beautiful. All right, we're coming towards the end of our discussion. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I want to ask when you think about your own legacy, when you think about the the impact of your life, um, we don't always get to write our, our own legacy, right? This isn't something that women are usually even asked about the, the impact of their life. But what is your message for the world? And uh, if you could craft it, what do you hope is the legacy that you leave behind this week? <laughs> yes, my legacy is creating 5,000 women masters. Masters who are master of their lives, their mind, their energy, their emotions, who can really create their lives beautifully, use their own power of creation, their own power of goddess, and really awaken that in them. That's a beautiful legacy. I wish you tons of luck with it. And uh, and I know you're well on your path. And uh, and that through this channel and others, as we share and connect, um, we do welcome every all of all of those of you in the audience. Please like, comment, share, ask your questions and help us disseminate these stories around the world. Uh, when you do, you are impacting over 100 women who have taken part in the book because uh, Inspired Journeys not only features the 31 authors, but it also features uh, the business directory component, uh, which has a number of women's headed businesses um, showcasing great offers and opportunities uh, for those of us around the world who want to tap into women's economic empowerment and contribute. So thank you so thank much, you so Shivani, much. for being with us today and for sharing so much of yourself and your story and your teachings and your learnings. And I hope you get in nature immediately and have a beautiful afternoon and period of time with the Matterhorn and uh, and with those you're working with today. Yeah, thank you a lot, uh, Misha, to you, to Esther, to um, Denise, also for this wonderful initiative. Uh, I would like to conclude with a mantra, which means that uh, everything is whole and complete. And when women come together, they create a miracle. Everything is like a mandala. It's like a divine perfect circle. Akanda mandala, Vyaptam 
Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Have a thank wonderful you. day, Shivani. Om Namah Shivaya. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.